Right, welcome back. Part three of our five by four meter garden room build. We've fixed up and supported our three walls. And now we're gonna be working on our front wheel, front wall, sorry, wheel, door cheeks and our lintel. So we're gonna use two eight by twos bolted together for our lintel. And then we're just gonna use four by two uprights for our door cheeks. And we're gonna get those fitted in. So I've marked our wall plate now ready for the doors. So if you come over here, the customer wants this, the doors to be one meters from this wall. So it's slightly offset. So it's about 400 mil offset from center. So we've marked our first point here, which is a meter. He wants them a meter. So that's where the first stud's gonna be right here. Um, and that way we then work our way back. So from this point here, we're gonna put another joist right here. So that's 300 from the first joist um, upright, sorry. And then uh, that's gonna be our lintel support here. So we'll show you how we build that in a minute. And then these are just gonna be our two uh, 180s for the uprights. So we'll have one in the corner, one here at 400, and then we'll have another one here which our lintel support will tag into. Same on the other side, we've marked it all out. So let's get onto that. We're gonna cut some wood, fix those up, and then we'll show you how it all works out because it'll be a bit bit clearer once it's all up. All right, we've got our center, our uprights up. Um, so we just, we build this wall freestanding. So as I said earlier, we've marked it all out. We've cut these to size. So these were just gonna be our two 180s, just like the, the front of this was. Um, and then we put a plate on top of it. And then we've got our 200, eight, which is 200 mil, our eight by two, which is gonna be the joist that sits across the top, our lintel, and then, here we've cut these down, so 200 shorter. So we're gonna have a nice 45 on top of that, which will sit on top. But we've got to cut this and get this completely plumb. Um, so we know this is plumb because I've, I've measured here. And what you do, because we know this wall's plumb, when we put these uprights in, what we do is we just measure from the outside upright there to this one, and that is seven zero. So then we just cut this to seven zero. And when we fit it all up and screw it in from the top, we know that that is gonna be completely plumb as it's the same measurement from the wall. So moving on to this one here, we do the same thing. So we will have a spirit level. As this is our door aperture, we want this to be absolutely perfect. Um, so we put our tape on there and we will get it exactly level in between the lines. All right, so that's plumb. So that is three, five, one. So we'll go cut a piece of 351. That's my uh, little pencil. Lovely. That one is too short. Mark it there with a the screw because I've lost my pencil. Lovely jubbly. Right. <laughs> then we'll fix that up there. And then we'll double check it before we fix it. So I'll put our level dead straight to that. As you can see, perfect. So we can fix that on. And now that is one of our door cheeks ready to go. Um, and then we'll build our other one exactly the same. And then what we'll do is we'll put a string line up along the front and then we will plumb these up to the string line before we fix the lintel in. And that will allow us to have a perfectly straight front wall. Okay, both the door cheeks fitted and are up. Um, we'll put some noggins in just to get these completely dead plumb because they're a bit twisted. We've put one on that side already. Um, and now we're gonna start on our lintels. So they're over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them up together and then we're gonna clamp them. And then we're just gonna put some bolts to fix them together all the way along. It just adds to a bit of strength. Really, we don't need a lot. It's only a two meter span. Um, and they're gonna move absolutely nowhere. There's like no weight on the roof of these buildings. It's a four meter span. so. It's not much, so we're gonna get on with that now. Right, James is fixing up our lintel now. Um, 
So you can see we're just going to tag it all into these points here from the bottom, from the sides, get as much fixings into it as we can. Um, and then we're good to go. So we fix them all together with these 100 mil bolts. So we just count the sink them in a little bit there. Got a washer, so they've got a washer on them. And then that way, that pulls this side into the joist nicely and fixes them together well. Um, yeah, so James is fixing those. We've put our diagonals here for a bit of support. As we put a level on these, and they're a bit out of level, so we've pulled them in, plumb, fixed them, both sides, they're ready to go. And we'll leave those there until we put the, the roof joists on, because um, that will just hold the whole all the front together. But once the roof joists on and the deck is complete, we're, we're a solid box, so good to go. One more thing to note on this is because these are 47s, they don't quite match up with the size of the 4x2. So you're going to have, always have a little gap there if you look. Um, it's about 5 mil, about 5 mil so. So we put them, make them flush on the inside for the plasterboard. And then what we'll do before we OSB sheath this, we're likely to put some packers in there and just pack them out 5 mil and pack this whole lintel the whole way along. Um, five mil out because it's it's five mil the whole way. So, and that will enable the um, the OSB to stay plumb the whole way up. And then when we put our batten on, we won't have the cedar, you know, sort of pulling in a little bit. You can see it there. So just a nice sort of five mil packer in between that and the OSB, and we're all good. You can put the packers between the joists, but I don't think it's a good idea because. Um, it's better to have them fixed together, makes them more solid. All right, lovely. So we finished up the front walls now and we've got a lintel in. They're all fixed. We've got a couple of noggins there just to support the door aperture. And then we've achieved it with our OSB on the outside here. Um, so yeah, pretty basic, straightforward how to do that. And then on the lintel, I said about packing it. And as you can see here, if James just comes under here with the camera, you can see we've just gone about seven mil down to about four mil here. You're never gonna get, they're never gonna be the same size. These timbers are always different. Um, so we always just have to pack those out a bit. But now we're dead straight here and we're gonna be dead plumb up. So when we put a batten on our cedar on, we're not gonna have any ways. If you don't pack that, it can start tipping in and it looks horrendous. We've seen a few that are like it, but ours aren't. So that's it for the front wall build. So that's stage three complete. Um, part three, should I say, stage three. So now we're going to get on to our roof joist. So later on this afternoon, we're going to start another video and we will be doing how we do our roof joist. On this one, because it's a four meter span, we're going to be doubling up on our roof joist, bolting them together because we're using five by twos. Obviously, we're trying to keep under that permitted development 2.5. So five by twos works. But with a big span like four meters, it's nice to bolt two together and get that added bit of strength. So we'll see you on the next one.